It is Old Farm Derby Week, and why settle for one prediction when you can have eight? Welcome back, guys, to Fog Football. It is Derby Week. Sunday will be Derby Day, and we have eight former Old Farm players who have gave their predictions. They have gave their opinions on what is going to happen, what is going to go down when Rangers play Celtic and a match that could very well decide where the title is heading come the end of the season. So Daily Record had interviews with uh, the eight former players. We're going to go through all eight of them, see what they're saying, see who they're predicting and we'll see who gets the majority here. Will it be majority Rangers? Will it be majority Celtic? Or could we see the predictions end in a draw and could we see the big game on Sunday, end in a draw. We could see that. I'm going to predict, though, that there's going to be a Celtic man predicting a conspiracy. Con predicting a penalty. Who's that? Well, I bet you Alan Stubbs is in here somewhere. I'm sure the referee told him that he's never going to give a penalty against his beloved Glasgow Rangers. All right. Well, I mean, I've no idea if Stubbs is in here or not, but we'll see. Why don't just start with the first guy? Let's stub it. Let's go. So, uh, first up, we have Ali McCoist. Who's uh, under a lot of heat. Yeah, Ali McCoy's backtracking lately. He won't, he won't be there. He won't be there, but uh, he'll be there in spirit. And this is what he says regarding the match. He said, quote, Sunday's old firm derby is a coin flip. I don't think there's anything between the two sides. Rangers were dreadfully unlucky in the last game against Celtic at Ibrox. They had a goal disallowed for nothing, and Kyogo scored an absolute wonder goal, which, to be fair, he has always been more than capable of. The fact that Rangers have the home advantage here will be absolutely vital. Old Firm games are usually massively important, but the next one is more important than ever. If Rangers can win this game, then it will be a massive step for them towards lifting the Scottish Premiership title. Celtic's form has been erratic at times. There's no getting away from that. There has been a little bit of unrest in their camp as well, but you know what is going to happen. You never know what's going to happen in the Old Firm Derby. I think Rangers will win the game 2-1 and go on to win the title, but only just. End of quote. Alan McCoy predicting a win for Rangers and a title victory for Rangers, and he's also claiming that Dessel's goal in the first Old Firm game should have stood, which I agree with as well. So I'm actually going to disagree with him when he talked about the first Old Firm, not the Dessel's goal, because it should have stood, but painfully unlucky. No, Rangers were just shite in that game. Sorry to burst his bubble, but Lammers missed an open net and the Kyogo goal was brilliant. Rangers did not do anything other than the disallowed goal, if you remember. They were shite. It wasn't, there was nothing unlucky about it. Right, yes, the Is goal... Sam Lammers not missing for an open net? Is that not unlucky, though? No, that's shite. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's not unlucky, that's shite. Missing it... an open the net's not unlucky? No, it's shit. But the unlucky fact... is like... I'll admit, the goal getting disallowed is unlucky, but playing shite and not mustering any chances apart from Sam Lammers well, missing open net is not unlucky. I think Michael Beale standing on the sidelines is entitled to think that Sam Lammers should score that, and I think he's entitled to feel unlucky after he misses it. Dreadfully unlucky is when the Hibs guy booted it off two of his own players' domes. That's unlucky. I think we'll see that this Sunday. Probably not. Oh, anyway, it's a beer bottle. McC <laughs> McCoy is going to win Rangers and a Rangers title win. Do you, are you on board with that? Yeah, I'm on board with that. I think it will happen. I think if Rangers win this game, it's I, I wouldn't sorry, I can't sit here and say the league's done, but it's a massive step to being done. It is right. Anyway, let's go and move on to Jackie McManara, uh, Dortmund legend, Celtic man. Uh, quote: Celtic won the first two games this season, and their problems haven't been against Rangers this season. It is other teams that are sitting in. You would expect Rangers being at home with the support they have to try and dominate the ball, which creates space. If Celtic keep the intensity up from the very start, I think there are areas they can hurt Rangers. It's a really important one because there are not many games left. It is imperative Celtic don't lose the game because obviously Rangers have a game in hand and there are not many games to go. A draw wouldn't be the worst result. End of quote. And I'm assuming maybe that is where McMamara is sitting here on the fence. He never actually gave a prediction, but he did say a draw wouldn't be the worst result. So I think that's his way of saying he thinks it might be a draw, although it could be leaning more towards he's hoping Celtic get a draw because then he'll favour them to, I don't know, finish the job at Celtic Park. But McNamara not, not being like uh, McCoy, he's not putting it on the line. Yeah, I mean, obviously a draw, right, favours Celtic at the two, I would say, slightly. I disagree. No, no, no I, de I definitely disagree. I think a draw favours Rangers, but 
Yeah, no, I draw favours Rangers one hundred percent. No, I disagree. I think I, no, I think it, oh no, it favours both, but I think it favours Celtic more because it means they just need to take it back to Parkhead. Uh, oh, you know, that's all they need to do. And when? Yeah, you see that home turf. No, if Celtic draw, let's assume that Celtic Rangers aren't going to drop any points against anybody. If there's a draw in this game, that means Rangers are going to Celtic Park with two results that keeps them in front of the title race, and one that effectively ends it. So, there's, there's no way a draw benefits Celtic here. No, if, Ring- if, 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 if Celtic, this is a draw, Celtic just, all, just need to win at Parkhead and they win the league. Aye, but it's all or nothing. All it or means nothing. they have to win. It's, I don't say well, you so can't see that. Be. Oh, so we'll just settle for a draw here because we, we'll, we'll take our chances at Parkhead. W- 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 name me the last time Rangers beat them at Parkhead. Under Gerrard. Which has been fucking a million years ago. Well, they're shite. They had Ange Postacoglu for a few seasons. The Celtic team's for the taking. You think Celtic fans will feel comfortable drawing this game and then having to win at Celtic Park? No, but there's worse scenarios to be in. See, see, see somebody say to you at the start of the season, for Rangers to win the title, you need to all you need to do is go to the last game against Celtic at Celtic Park and avoid defeat. So not yeah. win, avoid defeat. You wouldn't be you wouldn't take that. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm not confident in this Rangers team of going to Celtic Park and and ensuring that we cannot lose the game. What's more likely? That's why I think the Rangers need to. What's win. more likely to happen at Celtic? See, see the three outcomes at Celtic Park. If you add up a Rangers win and a draw, are you tell me that's not greater than fifty percent. Well, I mean, it, all right, it probably is, but I, I, I still think the way the old forms have went recently, if Celtic drew Ibrox, they, they would be licking their lips for the Parkhead game. <laughs> Well, they'll be licking more than their lips if they can beat, that's for sure. Anyway, uh, Kenny Miller up next. He's played for both teams, although I think it's fair to say he probably considers himself a Rangers man, but how much of a Rangers man can you be when you've played for the opposition? You know, Sorry, Kenny, it just doesn't work. It doesn't really he work. Kenny. Although, is it fair to say that he's developed these Rangers feelings since retirement? I mean, potentially, but he's played for Rangers that many times. They try, they try and cancel it. Was he... Celtic... <laughs> Well, was he claiming to be a Rangers man when he played for Celtic? I, I just don't get it. I'm not saying he isn't a Rangers man, but I, I just don't buy that he actually could do it. I mean, I seen somebody on Twitter earlier letting their kid, he's a Rangers fan, he let his kids join the Celtic youth squad, which I think is wrong for multiple reasons, by the way. But it's, at the same time, I, I just don't see how you, if you support Rangers, how you could allow that to happen. Anyway, let's see what Miller's got to say. He said, quote, Celtic have obviously dropped points more than Rangers over the last few months since Philippe Clement came in, and now Rangers have the chance, with their game in hand, to go two points clear at the top of the table. It's really, really important for Celtic that they don't get beat. I just think that mentally and psychologically, it'll be a real blow to them and their title chances. They've already given up a seven-point lead, so if they were to then see Rangers five points ahead of them in the table with six games to go, I think it would be a mountain to climb for Celtic. Both teams are getting pretty much a full squad back. Players returning from injuries. Cal McGregor is potentially going to be back. Cameron Carter-Fickers is back. Rio Hotate is back. On the other side, you've got Abdallah Sima coming back in. Todd Cantwell is getting minutes. Robbie Matondo. It's looking like all of these guys are going to be up to full speed as we get towards the end of the season. I'd say this is the biggest old firm meeting in over a decade, actually. I'm trying to think back to a bigger game, and I'd probably go back to the 2008-2009 season where we were in a very similar situation, only it was us who were chasing Celtic down. So our game at Ibrox meant even more, because they were the ones in control at that stage of the season. We won that game, and we went on to win the league title. End of quote. I Kenny Miller, I, again. I, I agree with Kenny Miller. I do think that if Celtic lose, it would be massive, but... I think what the problem is, if, if Rangers win and then beat Dundee, it's five points. And then it, in Celtic's head, it's, holy fuck, even if we beat them, they're yeah. still two points behind. But I, the, the thing for me is, no matter what happens, it's in Rangers' hands after this game. Even if Rangers get humped 5-0, it's in their hands. All they need to do is go to Celtic Park and win. I don't know. No, but I mean, Celtic, if Celtic lose this game, it is officially out of their hands. Yeah. So, I, I think there's a lot more pressure on Celtic than Rangers. But uh, I'm disappointed to see Miller no give a prediction. True, it's but... John Hartson, now, I think we already, 50, 50, we already mentioned John Hartson on the channel, but we'll, we'll see exactly what he had to say about this. He says, quote, 
Both teams will want to start fast, put their stamp on the game and keep the ball and frustrate the opposition. We know that Celtic keep the ball very well. This is part of their game with Matt O'Reilly, Rio Hattati and obviously whether it's Tomoki Awata or if Cal McGregor makes it start the game. Rangers will have the edge because it's home advantage and there is not one single Celtic fan in there at Ibrox. Whether that puts an extra bit of pressure on them or if Celtic can just play free and make it an open game. But I do think the way Rangers can get at Celtic is that if they keep a high press, keeping a high line, obviously the crowd will be getting behind them. At times, Celtic will need to defend very well and break. I think they will look to play on the counter-attack. Cameron Carr figures is key to that, but also the wide men in Dyson Maida and Nicholas Kuhn. They are both rapid. James Tavernier and Borna Barisic will want to push them back towards their own goal. And we know Kyogo scored in both games this season. The winner at Ibrox and that wonder goal at Celtic Park. This is a game for big players. Top players stand out and normally make the difference. Rangers have got a couple and Celtic have them. It's so difficult to call. The only reason I say Rangers for me are slight favourites is because of the home advantage. End of quote. So John Hartson actually going with Rangers. He's given Rangers the edge here. He also mentioned that Kyogo goal, that wonder goal. And I actually forgot about that earlier when you spoke about the, the Kyogo's great goal. I thought you were talking about the one he scored at Ibrox. No, he scored two. Or do you think he scored two great goals? I think they were both very good. Yeah, I did a combined 11 earlier, right? And I, I put Kyogo in over Dessers, and I said for the simple reason is, I think Kyogo's had a bad season, but he was, had a massive impact. Remember that last Old Firm game where you were arguing Dessers should be in? Yeah, but that was uh, how'd that work Old Firm in the bank. How'd that work it? Pretty pish. Dessers threw in gold, and he got a shot off Kyogo, smashing it in outside the ball. Also, though, I think you've got to look at, bear in mind, is Rangers have lost both Old Firms this season. The form book normally suggests... Law of average, is it? You know. They have to win eventually. And you look at last season against Ange, I mean, it was four points out of six at Ibrox. Right. So, so I've got faith in Rangers. Chris Boyd, who's he got faith in? He says, quote, Going into an old firm game at home, you've got to fancy yourselves. I think under Philippe, come on, they've turned it around. They do look a different team altogether. Home advantage could be key, but we have seen it before with Celtic. The pace that they have got up top and at the end of the pitch, Kiel's movement... Maida, they're going to defend really well. I'm looking forward to it. End of quote. That's it. Boyd, keeping it short and sweet. Yep. Also, I think, I mean, what we can touch upon with the fans is, like you said, if Rangers lose, it's still in their hands. But in the fans, I'm not saying the fans wouldn't be pissed, right? Because I will be. I don't give a shit what happens. If, but you can hold on to that belief that you can still do hands, it. Yes. If Celtic get beat, you've seen them already, the fans. I mean, if they get beat, being the five points behind will obviously be the furthest behind they've been in years since, you know, Ange's first season. And I just think that is going to have a massive effect on the team and the manager. Brendan Rodgers is going to be under so much pressure if they go five points He already behind. is. Yeah, he already is. But if they go five points behind, you know, with the amount of pressure on him, you've got to bear in mind, there's loads more, there's quite a few more games to play this season. And with that pressure getting ramped up, it's going to be an interest. I, I just, that's another thing though, right? It's not just the five point gap. Rangers aren't going to turn on Clement. It's just not going to happen. Even if the Rangers lose the league, Rogers, <laughs> he's not won them over yet. I think if Rangers lose the league, Rangers fans will be disappointed. But no one can really say anything negative about Clement because he was seven points behind, and yeah, Rangers are probably just lucky to be in a title fight because the gap that was there when Beale was fired, no one should have really came in, and I don't think overturn that. Yeah, I'll be so disappointed if Rangers don't and win And Clement the league, has. Not at fault. And you could argue that here, if Clement, if Rangers don't win it now, have they technically thrown it away by, you know, clawing that back? Maybe. But I don't think if Rangers don't win the league, you can you can blame Clement or you can say anything negative about Clement or want him out. You know, it was eight points behind. I think you'd have settled for him just making it respectable, winning a few old firm games and picking up a cup. He's already picked up a cup. He, or he hasn't won any old firm games, but who cares? He's... He's, he's won all games that have taken them above Celtic. He's only had one game, bear in mind. And he, he could he could potentially win a treble. So, I mean, even if Rangers... As disappointed as they would be, if, I think if Rangers finished the season with a cup double, it'd be a good season. Because keep in mind, see when Beal was sacked and Clement came in, see if you said you're going to play some good football, you're going to close the gap, and you're going to win both cups, every Rangers fan would have took that. Yeah. No, no one for eight points behind with that shit show your team thought that you could win a league. So... I mean, it's, I guess hindsight is key, but that's what it is. Alan Thompson, what's he saying? Quote, it's 11 first 11 on the pitch, irrespective of what's going on around the ground. How many fans they've got, how many fans Celtic have got, you've just got to be able to cope with the occasion. I think the team that copes with the occasion and copes with the, the, getting the ball down and calm and collect the possession and things like that will probably go on and win the game. End of quote. 
Alan Thompson sitting on the fence. I don't like this. I mean, I thought I'd expect that everyone here to give a prediction. There's a lot of people sitting on the fence here, not liking that the fence is being worn down into the ground here. Yeah, well, Craig Moore gives an answer. Let's see. What's he saying? Quote, for me, this is as big as an old firm game as I've seen in a long, long time. I think that if Rangers were to win this match and also win their rescheduled game against Dundee, I think Rangers will win the league title. I think it's massive. At this stage, the momentum, and obviously a short period between now and the end of the season, I think it would be too big to overturn if Rangers were to get their noses in front. End of quote. Keyword there is if, because he didn't actually predict Rangers to win, but I, I think that is a bit obvious here. To me, that's not you sticking your neck out in the line saying that if Rangers win this match and beat Dundee, the league's over. That's just me, Troops. Don't know if it's the grey hairs. You know, that sort of banter there going on for Craig Moore. If, if Craig, so what Craig Moore's saying is if Rangers win their next two games, they'd go five points in front of Celtic. There'd only be six points left, or six games left, and he believes that Rangers would win. Well, no fucking shit, because you'd also have to factor in the goal difference. The likelihood is, even if Celtic beat Rangers and Rangers drew... There's a good chance that still wouldn't be enough. Yeah. So Celtic would either need to have Rangers lose or have Rangers draw twice or have Rangers draw once but Celtic massively overturn the goal difference. And I'm not saying it is big right now, but if Rangers do go on and beat Dundee by a hefty scoreline and if Rangers can put a couple past Celtic and open up like a, you know, a 7-8 point goal difference, then that is effectively another point. Like So I think Craig Moore's I don't know, I think he's pointing at the fucking obvious there, to be fair. And then Chris Sutton says, finally, quote, it's a case of how fit Callum McGregor is. If he's sitting on a bike in a gym for five or six weeks, it's not quite the same as training. So how much tight, how much work does he do this week is key. Brendan Rodgers will have to make a decision, and Celtic are a better team with McGregor in it. But if he's not fit or even half fit, then he can't play. But it's a big boost for Celtic and Rio Hattati back with him coming through against Levy, plus Cameron Carter figures too. Celtic have been very good against Rangers in both games so far this season. Celtic will know this is a different Rangers team. The last manager, Michael Beale, was a bluffer. They now have got a manager who, who knows his stuff. He's galvanised the team and got them believing. They are moving in the right direction, but it's impossible to call. That's the beauty of the game. Anything can happen. Any scoreline, end of quote. Chris Sutton here. We dig it, Michael Beale. I think he's talking shy. I don't think Celtic have been good in both old forms. I think they were all right at um, Parkhead, but if you remember, like when Tav scored that free kick, they were absolutely on the ropes, despite having a man advantage. Yeah. And the first one, they offered nothing, yeah, really. Both teams were shy. Let's not pretend that... Yeah, Celtic won, right? Fair play. I'm not going to pretend it was a draw. But, yeah, Rangers also... I mean, you look at March... Lost a game against Motherwell, I was there. Lost a game against Benfica at Ibrox, so it's not like Rangers at Ibrox are particularly fantastic, I would say. And I would actually argue the same with Celtic. I think both teams at home aren't exactly great, but Rangers, I agree with Sutton, right? The, the injuries, Celtic getting back with Carter Fickers and Atati and McGregor, that will prove crucial if all three can start. But I'm not going to pretend that Cal McGregor has been great this season. I'm not going to pretend that Hattati's been great. I mean, they were they were trying to pretend during that Livingston game, man, that he was something different. He was good, Hattati, in that game. But they were trying to pretend. And then Carter Fickers as well. You've got James McFadden. Oh, he's so big and powerful. Carter Fickers has been pretty pants this season. But he's been he's suffered with injuries. I'll accept that. But you can't deny that those three coming in is massive for Celtic. But should Cal McGregor start? He probably will. I don't see how he wouldn't, even if he is half fit. Yeah, I think Cal McGregor, is, for me, he's not an impact sub. If, if he can only play 45 minutes, then you play him the first 45 minutes and take him off at half time. If, if Rangers are winning by a goal or two, I don't think Cal McGregor's the type of guy that comes on and changes the game. I think he, he dictates the game from the beginning. I think he makes a big difference at the start. Uh, yeah, if, you know, if Celtic are 2-0, you don't, you don't bring stuff. Cal McGregor on. Yeah, I, I, he's not the kind of guy that I think is going to come on with half an hour to go and, and get you back into a game where you, you're 2-0 down. I think Cal McGregor's the kind of guy that starts a game, controls the game, dictates the pace and you know drags the team with him. But he's, to me, he's not an impact player. So uh, I would start McGregor and then possibly take him off at half time if, no, if, if, if that's losing, all he's got if, in him. If they're losing the midfield battle at half time, I don't see why Yeah, he'd be a good risk to have to bring on. But again, you're right. If you're 2-0 down or something, or you need a goal, it's not Calvin Gregor's the man to bring on. And I think Awat has been all right recently. I don't think Celtic have that many game winners, though, off the bench. 
No, they don't. And that is another debate for uh, Celtic. Will they uh, start either or Kyogo? For but, me, I think you'd start either because I think Kyogo better impact. To be fair, though, I mean, who knows? When was the last time Celtic needed to bring on somebody for the bench to change the game against Rangers? Normally, they, they are in front. True, but they have scored the most goals in the league from substitutions, so that's a crucial stat. Anyway, that's it, guys. There's the predictions of the eight pundits. We'll give our predictions tomorrow, and we'll catch you in the next one. Beanfog Football. Till next time. Peace.